नमस्कार आई एम मिसिस के तीसा मार्थ एंड आई टीच द सर्टिफिकेट कोर्स कथक इन द नालंदा नृत्य कला महाविद्यालय इट इज़ अ मैटर ऑफ ग्रेट प्राइड एंड ऑनर फॉर मी टू स्पीक इन द नालंदा वेबशाला सीरीज आई वुड लाइक टू थैंक डॉक्टर पद्मभूषण का नक रेड़े जी प्रिंसिपल डॉक्टर उमा रेड़े जी वैदे ही रेड़े लाल एंड आई एंटायर टीम फॉर गिविंग मी एन अपॉर्चुनिटी टू स्पीक इन दिस प्लेटफॉर्म I am still young still a student some of you would even call me a young mind but as they say ethics and equity and principles of justice do not change with the calendar some ethics need to be followed no matter what era no matter what age you belong to my topic is ethics in indian classical dance and i would like to elaborate my thought about it what are ethics in simple words ethics is the branch of knowledge that deals with moral principles not all these principles are written down but they need to be followed if you observe you need to follow ethics in every place in life be it at home be it at work if your ethics and moral values are strong then there is very little place for competition jealousy and all the negative factors that pull you down and your focus remains concentrated on the dance your sadhana and the bliss that you get from it what is the purpose of ethics in indian classical dance well art is to entertain to educate to create rasa and to give a pleasurable experience overall brahmananda is a spiritual bliss that the yogis receive both the artist the dancer and the yogis do sadhana for which they require extreme commitment self discipline determination etc but the brahmananda that the yogis receive lasts eternally for a lifetime whereas the rasananda the the aesthetic bliss that the dancer tries to create lasts only momentarily for that performance a yogi goes away from the society to get his bliss to get his calm to find a happy place whereas a dancer tries to become a part of the society to get his limelight this could make the artist the dancer egoistic self-centered money-minded and he could develop negative traits in his character i always feel that as a dancer when you start learning you are at the midpoint you have two two uh, places to satisfy one is one is the aesthetic bliss that you want to achieve from your dance and one is your ego many a times it happens that you could deviate uh, in the path leading only to towards your ego that is when ego takes over and ethics are forgotten hence for a classical dancer to keep his ethics and moral values in place it's very important many a times we don't get an audience that is that reciprocates in the way we want it to losing your ethics or losing your moral values just to please the audience to give them the stuff that they want to see again i think does not suit a classical dancer a classical dancer should always remain confined in his own art form and do the things that he is supposed to classical dance as i said is a sadhana years and years of traditions involved in it there are many things that are taught to us by our gurus that they have learned from their gurus so hence it's a tradition passed down to us this is also a field which gives us ample of freedom freedom of thought freedom of choreography but as long as your ethics are strong you will never deviate from your style and you will never deviate from the true bliss that the classical dance is supposed to be hence i feel that ethics are extremely important in the indian classical dance 
training your mind classical dance is not something that you can learn overnight it is something that you learn with practice with determination and after years of training classical dance has been a part of our culture for thousands of years now but with age everything right from our thought process to our way of dressing changes classical dance has evolved too but the character the essence of it has still remained the same educating the mind without educating your heart is no education at all said the famous greek philosopher aristotle this holds true for classical dance as well if you approach dance with a very short sighted vision of just learning some basic steps here and there you won't be doing justice to yourself or to the art form whenever you approach classical dancing you have to approach it as a process of never ending learning and the learning never stops you require to do riyas you require to have the right amount of patience and need to learn it under your guru because your guru no guru can bring out the best in you you require patience you require discipline you need to go to the core of the technique understand the lay understand the tal there's a deep study involved in it and if you really want to dance well you bet you need to learn those aspects of dance and to reach the core to the base of it again if you approach dance with a very short sighted vision of just going on the stage you're doing no good to yourself if you observe videos if you've seen videos by many big gurus many respected gurus in dance you will always see that they op- they've always approach dance for the love of it because dance the aesthetic bliss that the dance gives cannot be described in words and whenever you dance that is the only bliss that you should try to achieve the fame the accolades the money everything follows yes it follows but later on when you reach when you've made a place for yourself where you are when you're worthy of it today we live in this age of social media i feel that if you want to learn dancing just to make a video on the social media you are doing an injustice to the audience also it is our duty as youngsters to to let the world know how beautiful the dance is and how beautiful each classical dance style is and hence we have to keep certain principles old school the principle of dance has remained the same from many years that it is something that you cannot master without practice and this holds true even today the principle is simple it is all about making your heart your making your soul happy and if you achieve that with classical dance by learning classical dance i think everything else follows eventually guru shishya parampara gurur brahma gurur vishnu gurur devo maheshwara gurur sakshat par brahma tasmay shri guruve namaha this is a very famous shloka of our indian culture where we've compared guru with brahma vishnu mahesh a guru has the power to create knowledge within you to preserve the knowledge present and to destroy all the evil present within you in sanskrit a guru is a person who dispels darkness and shows light the reference of the word guru is found in early vedic texts of hinduism guru has a place of god 
not just in our Indian classical dance, but in all fields of learning, I feel. Every guru tries to train his disciples with the best of his abilities. Every guru has a different style, a different method of teaching. But every guru craves only and only for the betterment of students. With time, we develop a certain bond, a certain attachment, a certain love for the guru. The guru also develops the same attachment with his students because of which he feels he has the right to scold, advise the students to hold their hands and show them the right way. Not everything that the guru will say might make you happy. Sometimes a guru might advise you not to participate in a particular competition or not to do a certain program because he wants you to be prepared. At such times, you do feel sad, but you have to trust that the Guru has only and only the best intentions for you. With time, you develop such a relation with the Guru that you understand the words that are not spoken. Just a few expressions here and there that the Guru does and you, try, you, you understand what the Guru is saying. Now with age, the relationship between a guru and shishya has become a little informal. Nowadays, the gurus are humble enough to come to the level of the students and to understand things from their perspective. But that does not mean that the gurus or the student is at par with one another. The level of guru and the place of guru will always remain high no matter what the relationship is, whether it's formal or informal. A guru might be younger than you, a guru might be elder than you, but the knowledge that he gives you is of the most importance. And it is because of this knowledge, this beautiful knowledge that is passed to you, that you should respect your guru, who always has the best intentions for you in his heart. Nowadays, a number of respected personalities conduct workshops and as young artists, the curious minds that we have, we always want to attend these workshops and try and understand the perspective of respective personalities. But by attending just one or two workshops by such personalities, you cannot call them your gurus. Of course, you need to respect them by practicing whatever you have learned in, your, in the workshop. Because the, the respect and the principles of respect remain same even here. You also need to mention their names in performances in case you perform a piece taught to you by them. As students of classical art, I feel it's a moral duty to respect our gurus and to reciprocate by following all the disciplines and all the advice that they give us. You should not become a teacher in performing arts, a guru, unless you've had many years of experience. The depth of your knowledge should be good. You should be able to pass on the tradition to your students in a proper manner, with the proper technique. Your communication skills should be good. In case you are a young teacher, you should consult your gurus and should report to them about the new syllabus and all the things that you are teaching your students. This, like I said, is a rich tradition and has to pass on from generation to generation in a structured manner. In case you feel that your knowledge is not that great or you are not confident enough to teach, then you should refrain from teaching students. Not every performer is a good teacher. Not every good teacher is a good performer. As a teacher, you have to know and understand that the responsibility of passing on this art lies with you, is given to you. You, you will continue to play a, 
very important role in the life of students. And hence, you should only and only teach students if you think you are worthy enough to be a teacher and to pass the knowledge in a systematic manner. Dance is a visual medium. It is also a form of meditation, a process by which you connect with God and become one with Al Almighty. A certain amount of spiritualism is also depicted by the clothes that you wear. Classical dance is not something that you do wearing a jeans and a t-shirt. You have to be in Indian attire, not just on stage, but also in your Riyas sessions. On stage, nowadays a lot of experimentation is being done in terms of colors, in terms of designs. But you have to make sure that your costume is strictly Indian and true to your style. Classical dance gives you an opportunity to interact with the audience. The seed of the rasa lies with the audience. Sometimes the audience is so moved by the performance that it becomes one with the performer. Classical dance gives you an opportunity to make a place in the hearts of the audience, to connect with the audience. And hence, it's a moral duty of the performer that he or she dances on traditional music. The music could be live or it could be recorded, but it has to be traditional in nature. Every dance style has had temple origin and it has moved from temple to stage and evolved the generation. So every dance style has a rich tradition in itself and hence it does not need to depend on any modern or any Bollywood music for it to look good. We as performers need to explore this tradition and experiment within this space. It is our moral duty as performers to show our dance in the right manner to the thousands of people who would come to watch our performances. As performers, it's our duty to introduce our accompanists to respect our audience and in the same manner that we would want them to respect us. Ethics of copyright in classical dance. Classical dance, as I said before, is something that you learn, practice for many years and then perform under your own guru. If you practice every day, you see a certain amount of growth every day. And then there comes a point when you start choreographing your own dances. There have to be ethics that need to be followed here also. The outcome of every choreography depends on the psychology of choreographer at that point, the memory of steps that he or she has had over the years, and the stimulation of experiences that he's had over the years. Now, whenever you said to do a choreography, it is obvious that the shadow of your guru will be seen in every action because those are the steps, those are the actions that you've grown up learning and admiring. As a choreographer, you are allowed to take an inspiration but never copy a particular choreographer and call that choreography your own. Looking at somebody else's choreography, changing a few steps here and there and then calling that choreography your own choreography is not allowed. Whenever you set to choreograph, you have to mention the names of the composer, the musicians involved in the music piece that you're choreographing on. If you are dancing a particular piece in your performance, you have to mention the name of the guru under whom you've learned that piece. You have to also ask for permission from that guru and ask whether you're worthy enough to perform that piece in front of audience on stage. Whenever you're choreographing on a certain words or verses written or composed by a composer, you are not allowed to change the words to match your steps. As a choreographer, 
you have to respect the hard work done by other dancers by the composers and keep your choreography as original as possible only then you can call that choreography your own i'm sure most of you all must have visited the beautiful caves of ajanta and elora a few of you near mumbai must have visited the elephanta caves these structures were built thousands of years ago but even when we go there today we cannot stop getting mesmerized and admiring them for their beauty classical dance is just like that though it came into origin thousands of years ago the it has been so beautiful that it continues to touch our lives even today as students of performing arts it is our moral duty to see to it that the beauty of classical dance continues to touch the lives of future generations as well and this can only and only be done if the ethics in dance are maintained well there's a very famous saying that seek respect not attention for respect respect lasts longer this is completely true for classical dance as well we as students of the performing arts need to respect our own style and make sure that the tradition is passed to the next generation exactly in the manner and with the purity that we received it i'm still young still a student and i will continue to be a student in the field of performing arts I thank you all from the bottom of your of my heart for taking out your time and listening to my views on ethics in classical dance. Thank you. Namaskar.